As FGMC remain a delicate social issue and a hot political potato, they need to augment the awareness of journalists around the harmful effects of the enduring traditional practice is as urgent as it's timely by Kor Hasmo in this report. It's against this backdrop that the Gambia Committee on Traditional Practices Affecting the Health of Women and Children, Gamco Trap, brought together more than 35 journalists from across the Gambia media to raise their awareness of the consequences of FGM, female genital mutilation oblique cutting, on the well-being and reproductive health of girls and women in a day-long training held at its headquarters in Carnivian State. The training marked a significant step in their personnel to drive change within their communities as regards female genital mutilation cutting with a keen focus on engaging children, women and men. The training was aimed at enhancing awareness among media personnel regarding depression issues linked to FGM cutting by delving into topics such as sexual and reproductive health rights, gender-based violence and other harmful traditional practices. Participants gain invaluable insights into the multifaceted impact of FGMC. Gamco Trap Board Chair Imam Babali took participants back in history as regards the origin of female genital mutilation. The gentleman started first between uh, Hajara and Sarata, the two wives of our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, whom we all know and heard. He is called the father of the three religions. He is the grandfather of Moses. He is the grandfather of Jesus. He is the grandfather of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. So this holy prophet grown up to 80 something, some are saying 100 and something, without having a child with the old wife. And the old wife suggested for this old man to marry to her servant. So that might be, might be, Allah will bless them with a baby. The overarching goal of the engagement was to equip media houses with the knowledge and tools necessary to catalyze positive transformation within society by harnessing the influential power of the media. These journalists are pre-made to challenge existing beliefs and practices surrounding FGMC, fostering a more enlightened and progressive societal narrative. The executive director of Gamco Trap, Dr. Isa Tuture, highlights the purpose of the day-long meet of FGM. This workshop today is to bring you together from these different media. We divided you into two. We brought in the local artists and then we brought you also as another level of the media so that you will all have the same information for you to be able to engage uh, effectively. I know that it is not a new thing to most of you. You have had the debate in the last few months, how it was hot and how difficult it was and the type of dynamics that were unfolding. Now, these were all part of the process. So I am sure most of you not, are not new to the debate on ending FGM or upholding the law to end FGM in the Gambia. You must have heard about it, and you might have engaged in one way or the other. But then we thought as an organization leading this process, an organization that has been known to do these things, like you call it our baby, but it's your baby, because it's about development, it's about progress, it's about humanity. Gamco Trap Proactive Stance underscores the critical role that media outlets can play in driving meaningful change by leveraging their platforms to raise awareness of the harmful practices, foster dialogue, and let the advocacy for gaining sovereignty from the circles of FGMC. Dr. Ture said among the purpose of the training is to ensure better understanding of FGM and the misconception about FGM. ...of understanding what FGM is. If, it, if uh, it might be a repeat for others, it might be a revision for others. But for you to see the facts, because during the course of the discussions over the three months, in terms of the debates and the dynamics that were unfolding, there were different misrepresentations that were happening, such as FGM and Islam, FGM development, FGM and women's rights, FGM and the constitution, and so many other things were being said. And a lot has been going on in the social media, in all forms of uh, fora, forums about the debate. And it went to a point, it became what, what I call toxic, to the point that it became toxic and people were trying, throwing things to each other. 
This is an issue. It's not about Aisha Tuture. It's not about Imam Babali or Ami Bojang or President Adama Barrow. It is about the lives of people, particularly women, because of the... In 2015, the adoption of the Women's Amendment Act, which Section 32A and Section 32B criminalizes and sets out punishment for performing, aiding and abating the practice of FGM, represented a significant milestone in the country's effort to safeguard girls' and women's rights. Meanwhile, a new chapter unfolds where informed reporting and advocacy converge to pave the way for a more just and equitable society. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Baikor.